Jeremy Stockman here today with one a little more off the beaten path. But was Mike Lee's high hopes on a path worth beating in the first place? Let's take a look. It's Britain in the 1980s and Cyril's a bike messenger living in the big city. His best gal Shirley sure would like a baby, but Cyril's a Marxist and isn't too fond of contributing to the overpopulation crisis. They meet a man looking for work and take him in and give him a spot of tea. Meanwhile, Cyril's mom loses her keys and heads to the neighbors, Leticia and Rupert, for help. They were about to go to the opera and call on Cyril's sister, Valerie, but when she shows up, whoops, she forgot her keys too. So they all have to wait for Cyril to arrive to finally get his mom inside. Are you quite sure you brought the right key? Mm -hmm. What are you on about? Left for the door. You taking a piss? What? Where's my mom? Ah! Now look here, I really have no idea where your mother is, who she may be. Or indeed, whether you have her. You want a fat lip? Seems like their mom is losing her wits, so Valerie decides to throw her a big birthday party at her house. Cyril and Shirley get dressed up, Valerie makes desserts, and everyone has a swell time before, spoiler alert, a big row over lifestyle choices ruins the party, and Cyril and Shirley show mom the roof of their apartment. Over there, look. It's where you live. Yeah, behind the guest works. Top of the world. Now, High Hopes came out in 1988, and we all know how high everyone was back in the 80s, but it wasn't the drug-induced kind of highs that this one was talking about. You see, High Hopes was showing us why striving for upward mobility was the key to a vibrant future. Cyril and Shirley are listless, useless poor people. Content to just smoke hash and work crummy jobs, they don't even want to have kids to help out the tax base. Meanwhile, their mom's rich neighbors, Leticia and Rupert, contribute to charitable causes, renovate council flats, and buy things to help keep the economy strong. Heck, they even have a more active sex life. Mr. Sausage is coming to get you. No, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm going to get Mr. Sausage. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy went to market. <laughs> This little piggy stayed at home. Then you have all the way Cyril's sister Valerie's doing her part. She desperately wants to be rich because she sees the dead end nature of her deadbeat brother's life. She's out there shopping till she drops and filling her house with class, all for the good of the nation. Heck, even old mom can see how much of a disappointment Cyril's way of life is. Just look at how despondent she is over her kid being underemployed and not giving her some grandkids to play with. Who am I going to go in for? Seems like old Mike Lee was, deep in Thatcher era England, realizing that the only way out for Britain was by embracing their upwardly mobile desires and doing their part to reinvigorate the national fiber. And that was by stiffening up their lips and yuppifying their lives. I'm Jeremy Sockman, giving the solid bit of advice for solving a country's woes that is high hopes, my seal of approval. I'll tell you something free of charge. Every man has his price. We ain't all like you. I know you ain't all like me. Very few are. He's in a dead end job. What you gonna be doing when you're 45, 50? Well, we're moving on.